Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Joe. I am standing in between my new buddies, Saguaros from Arizona. I'm standing here in the Saguaro National Park and I am enjoying a most amazing trip to see this beautiful, beautiful, stunning cactus country. The huge saguaros and many other types of cacti, other succulents and other plants. It's just amazing. Standing in between these gentle giants really is very, very humbling. And if you would like to join me on a trip to experience this most amazing and beautiful country and the nature here, then this is the video for you. This is just absolutely magic and it is a dream come true for me. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Joe. I am standing here in cactus country in Arizona. Join me in this video for a trip to get to know this amazing countryside and this amazing set of plants and nature. Experiencing the unique flora and fauna of this most beautiful area in Arizona, the Sonoran Desert, it is just mind-boggling. And above all, experiencing the beautiful saguaro cacti, the Carnegia gigantea, as they're called scientifically, is just a fantastic experience, especially for a cactus enthusiast from Europe like myself, who's been growing these plants, cacti that is, ever since being a young boy and having dreamed of coming to Arizona one day to walk and hike in between all these cacti, in between all these wonderful plants and the springtime as it is now with all the flowers in bloom, the desert in bloom is just a mind boggling experience. Now, before I could say hi to my new buddies, I had a fair amount of traveling ahead of me, flying from Munich, an 11 hour flight across the Atlantic, the North Atlantic into LA. And on the way there, beautiful weather, beautiful views, the Grand Canyon, the Colorado Plateau, still fair amount of snow on the peaks there. And even flying into LA, there were some of the peaks still powdered with snow. Onward, flying from LA to Phoenix and arriving there in the evening. And that set us up for the first drive the next morning on the I-10 from Phoenix down to Tucson. It was a pretty relaxing drive on the I-10 and some first beautiful views of mountain landscapes, but also the springtime desert in bloom, a lot of yellow brittle bush left and right of the I-10. Halfway between Phoenix and Tucson, near the town of Coolidge, we visited the Casa Grande Ruins National Monument, a fantastic world-class archaeological site, really, really interesting and definitely worthwhile to visit. There is a excellent visitor center and actually some saguaros here. This was the first saguaro that I was able to hug from close up. <laughs> the Casa Grande Ruins National Monument actually protects the remains of a Hohokam village, a village compound that uh, is dated back to approximately the 1300s. Some first truly beautiful cacti on display around the visitor center. Everything that the visiting cactus enthusiast enjoys. <laughs> Casa Grande was actually the first prehistoric ruin to be protected by the United States government. And it was set aside in 1892 by President Benjamin Harrison at that time. We drove on 
from Coolidge back onto the I-10 and we're heading for Tucson in southern Arizona on our way to the Saguaro National Park where we visited both the west as well as the east side. And there I was finally, a dream come true, standing at the entrance to the Saguaro National Park, the western section, and it was early on that first day that we started with a visit to the Red Hills Visitor Center, a really well-made visitor center. Uh, they've got a shop there, there's uh, a very interesting movie that introduces the whole Saguaro National Park and the vegetation and the, uh, the fauna. And what a view from the terrace straight out into the Saguaro Cactus Forest. Just look at that with the Red Hills as a backdrop. Beautiful visitor center, as I said, and also really excellent information that informs visitors about the um, cacti and especially the saguaro, of course, the, the main star attraction of the center and of the, uh, the national park. But not just huge cacti to be seen, also a couple of Echinocereus engelmannis starting to flower in the grass just outside of the visitor center. And then it was time to head off for our first hike. When I say we, it was actually the three of us, my two sons, Fabe and Luke, and myself, and we were ready for a couple of days in the Saguaro National Park, both the western as well as the eastern section. And on this day, we started off with a hike up the King Canyon, a quick cleaning of the boots with the boot brush to avoid bringing in invasive species, especially grasses. And that's really to help protect this very sensitive environment, so important to preserve the saguaro cacti. And off we went. We chose to follow the actual wash of the King Canyon. So it's a dry river or stream bed really, which fills up very rapidly with lots of water when there's heavy rains during especially the uh, summer or winter months. The saguaro cacti or Carnegie gigantea are arguably the most iconic of all cacti and they occur only in the Sonoran Desert of Arizona and uh, neighboring Mexico. They are by far the largest, certainly the highest cacti of the United States, growing up to heights of around 30 feet or 10 meters. Some individuals have even been reported as high as 59 feet, that's 20 meters. We decided to visit Arizona and the Sonoran Desert in the spring, so during April mainly to witness not just these wonderful cacti, but also myriads of wildflowers in bloom during the spring. It was early April, so we had the poppies open, but we also had some amazing other plants like this desert mariposa lily. So seeing all these wonderful wildflowers, it was clear to us that there had been a fair amount, quite a bit of rain in the preceding winter months. And there was actually still a trickle of that precious water running down the actual wash and in some areas forming beautiful water pools and still providing the valuable water to the cacti as they were getting ready, preparing themselves for the long, hot, dry season that was now soon to come. Saguaro cacti can reach ages of typically 150 to 180 years, and some have even been reported as 200 or more years old. Although these gentle giants are extremely well adapted to their harsh environments, of course, they too at some point will die. And 
That can be due to lightning strikes or strong winds during storms, especially in the summer monsoon period, but it can also be due to catastrophic freezes during the winter. Equally deadly and usually a slow death is due to viral and fungal diseases. And what we can often observe on dead plants are bacterial necrosis. That's this black fluid, this black gooey sap that's oozing from the dead plants. So viruses, fungi and bacteria attack these gentle giants in the course of their long lifetimes. So these bacteria, viruses and fungi, they can enter the plant, especially at damaged areas, at areas where, for example, birds like the gila woodpeckers or the gilded flickers have drilled nesting holes into the plants. And although those nesting holes that have been drilled into stems and branches, they normally heal off relatively quickly with a callous tissue which is secreted by the plant and which hardens very quickly into a sort of a cork-like layer. That protects from invading bacteria and fungi. But typically it's when these huge cacti play hotel for so many organisms during their long lifetime. It's during the hosting of all these hotel guests. That's when it's of course always a possibility that these uh, tiny organisms and viruses enter these plants, sadly resulting in a deadly end for the plant. The majority of the mass and the weight of a saguaro, of course, consists of water cells filled with water. A large mature saguaro can weigh upward of five tons. It's only when a plant dies that we can actually see the internal structure of a saguaro and it's really quite amazing a little bit like bones with a human the inside of a saguaro actually has ribs so there's an internal structure of wooden rods these ribs that form a cylinder that holds up the actual massive structure of the plant and this cylindrical arrangement of these ribs that provides strength and flexibility, allowing these massive columnar cacti also to sway slightly in strong wind and still being strong enough to withstand storms without buckling, without breaking. The internal cage of wooden ribs has an interesting and quite attractive appearance and therefore occasionally is also used as furniture wood or building material, fence rods and things like that. Saguaros are very slow-growing cacti. In fact, in their first 10 years of age, they usually only reach a size of about one and a half to two inches, so three to five centimeters, a bit bigger than a golf ball. And it takes these plants about 35, sometimes even 50 years for the first flowers to appear. They'll have reached a height of about six to 12 feet or two to four meters by then. And when we see saguaros with branches, well, the first branches usually appear only at an age of about 50 to 70 years, so at heights of about 15 feet or 5 meters. And when they're still very small, especially as seedlings, they are extremely sensitive to seasonal drought, so aridity, and also frost. But equally, they're very sensitive to the scorching sun of the Arizona summers. So if we're looking for young saguaros, we'll likely not find them in open, sunny, hot areas. But in fact, they're hiding very well under the shade, the protection of nurse plants, very often Palo Verde or mesquite bushes. So this little fella is probably already about 15 or so years old. He's really spiny and that of course protects him against herbivore predators like rodents, rabbits, and other animals. Now this one, of course, still has a way to go to really mature and grow up. But amazingly, once they reach a certain age, maybe about 20 or 25 years, they actually start growing a lot faster than they did in those first 10, 15 years. 
I absolutely love these Palo Verde bushes with their green photosynthesizing stems and branches. Don't they look really cool? From a certain age and height onwards, the saguaros outgrow their nurse plants. And by then, they've actually adapted to the scorching hot sun, and they'll be standing freely without any protection at all. As we continued up the wash, we suddenly came to a rocky outcrop in one of the bends of the seasonal stream. And this gave us an amazing insight into what the roots of these huge cacti actually look like. Because I'd always been asking myself how these giants were actually anchored into the sandy, or at least what looked like sandy, gravelly soil that they were growing in. And amazingly, these here were actually growing pretty much in the bedrock, so in cracks of the rock that was exposed at surface here. And what was amazing and beautiful to observe with the smallest of the three, it exposed the massive taproot, the strong, long, deep root that this cactus has and that it uses to anchor itself in the ground, in this case in the geological cracks and fissures of the bedrock. The two larger plants were equally growing pretty much straight in the exposed bedrock. And then we discovered even more plants. They were clinging to the cliff to the face of the bedrock. Again, these were growing in the fissures in the fractures of the exposed rock and the cliff face. I'm guessing the seeds of the mature saguaros growing slightly higher up on the hill, they get washed down the hill and then are caught in little crevices and little cracks of the rock face. And so in the absence of a Palo Verde or mesquite bush, they'll actually grow nicely in the protective shade of the cliff rocks. I'm guessing this one is about 10, maybe 15 years old. Wishing you good luck, buddy. Only a few more decades and you'll be up there with the other big ones. Now, hiking through beautiful cactus country, of course, it's the saguaros that first catch your attention and they just are amazing to study. But at the same time, if you keep your eyes open, there's all kinds of other cacti, smaller cacti, of course, that are just amazing to discover. But it does take a while to actually get your eyes in on these smaller plants and how well they're sometimes hidden. There were some beautiful mammalarias that, again, also these were actually growing in some of the bedding, some of the ledges of the rock faces here. Others, again, were hidden really well in between little boulders and gravel. And where plants were standing in sunnier, warmer locations, the first blooms were appearing. Awesome. Some of the white spine, really beautiful mammalaria, are very well hidden in between the light colored rocks and gravel. And also here, really popular places under many of the Palo Verde and Mesquite bushes. Like these two young cacti, an Echinocereus and a Ferrocactus.
and others like these Echinoceraeuses are actually growing just so well hidden in between mosses and grasses. And it's great to see some of them already starting to flower. Now is this one here actually making fun of the little cacti? Or actually of all of us? Apart from the saguaros, it is the opuncias that really dominate the landscape here and the vegetation. It is a paradise for all opuncia fans. They are truly beautiful, but they can also be a real nuisance. It's also a paradise for all fans of opuntoid plants like the cylindropuntias, so the teddy bear shoya and other types. They have incredible spines, barbed spines and glochids, and you really want to stay away from them, to be honest. They also form tree-like plants, very old, and actually with a little bit of a similar structure of internal skeleton as the Zawaros so have. And it's not just the barbed spines on the plants, it's also what's below the plants that you've got to watch. And they are truly nasty, as they can even pierce thick, heavy walking boots. Yeah, definitely not my standard choice for my greenhouse or terrace, but they are beautiful to look at from the distance. Talking of Apuntias being almost everywhere, well, this one here looks like it got a seat in the front row. And these two happy campers, a Mammillaria on the left and a Echinocereus on the right, well, it looks like they were just having a little bit of a cuddle in the mosses. Then as we walked on, we came across, again, a very typical but amazing looking plant. This is a really typical plant of the Sonoran Desert environment. It is the amazing Ocotillo plant, or scientifically, Fuqueria splendens. And in the early morning, actually, we observed hummingbirds visiting these beautiful flowers. Isn't this just an amazing plant? It is also a paradise for all fans of ferrocacti. Ferrocactus is a genus with some of my favorite cacti. Just look at the spines of these incredible plants and they are so beautiful to look at and they are also fantastic and rewarding to grow. Their spines are just incredible, both from the size, the color, and the general appearance of these plants is uh, just stunning. The only thing, of course, is they usually have to grow quite old and quite sizable before they actually start flowering. But there are exceptions. And we actually also came across a number of crested forms, crustate forms of ferrocacti. And they were just fantastic, various species of ferrocactus. The large ones bearing the ripe and bright colored fruits of the blossoms of the past summer. 
thousands and thousands of seeds that will be picked and distributed by insects, birds, and other animals, and redistributed in the area to hopefully grow into many new seedlings to come. And as a jetliner passes overhead, we notice that one of the cacti here actually had a crested top. And of course, we had read before coming here of the rare sightings of crested saguaro cacti. And so we were especially on the lookout for these. Some of them are truly spectacular. By the way, if you'd like to find out more about how and why cacti actually form these unusual crested shapes, then why not actually check out my video on this topic on my channel. But don't rush over there just right now. Why not finish this video first? But it was not just the fascinating flora, the saguaro cacti, the shola, the opuntia cacti, and all the others that were so fascinating. But we also came across the hidden and mysterious signs of a past thriving culture in the area. On some of the cliffs and rock faces of the wash, we came across petroglyphs. A lot of these petroglyphs mysterious symbols and patterns of the past can be found in the area. And yet it seems we haven't quite deciphered what they actually mean, what they stand for, when they were actually applied, and exactly by whom. Obviously, Native Americans who lived in this area many, many generations ago. Our hike among these gentle giants, these Saguaro cacti was a dream come true, and at the end of every day we really enjoyed the fantastic sunsets that we were able to experience here in wonderful Arizona. It is such a breathtaking scenery, and we, of course, not only stayed in the Saguaro National Park, but also went for a road trip around the wonderful and amazingly diverse landscapes of Arizona, including the Petrified Forest National Park. We went to the Grand Canyon, of course, Antelope Canyon area. We visited near the Four Corners area, the Monument Valley, truly spectacular, and many areas more, and always enjoyed the kind hospitality and friendship that we encountered on all our travels.
Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and the countryside and the plants as much as I did. And if you did, then why not leave a like to support this channel or send a comment. And if you haven't yet subscribed, then please subscribe. That will really support this channel. And while you're subscribing, don't forget to click the bell icon. That will ensure that you will get the latest updates and uploads to this channel automatically. Thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for watching. And as always, hope to see you very soon again. Take care and happy growing.